Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Feedback Friday. There has been a lot of new information regarding the upcoming Rogue on Vogue event that has been released, so let's see what kind of dirt we can dig up this time. But first, ranked matchmaking is undergoing some more changes once again. Soon seeing the return of 5v5 team versus team queuing, as well as the introduction of estimated queue times. With this update, you will be able to see the most popular queue times for your region, meaning you can plan your matches with your team accordingly. And I'm sure the Australian and Asian regions will also be happy to hear that matchmaking in those regions will be returning soon. Although both regions will be combined for this update, it is a good step in the direction for the players who wish to queue from these areas. In other news, Dirty Bomb has been seeing some exposure recently from the fine people over at Fierce PC LTD and their Gamer Bus, which was held at Multiplay Events I-57 over the past weekend. It's always great to see this game getting some exposure, so hopefully we will be seeing an influx of new players, and in good timing too, since the new event is just about ready to launch. And speaking of the next event, in breaking news, fashion icon Max Bashki, who is responsible for the designs of the new CDA uniforms, has been found dead in his Paris home. The incident is classed as a murder, and some are concerned over the whereabouts of his bodyguard when this event took place. Max's family has been tweeting at fans from his personal Twitter account, thanking everyone for their love and support during this difficult time, and they made it clear that the only thing which matters to them at this point is bringing his killer to justice. So if anyone has any information relating to the murder, please do not hesitate to contact the police nationale. But this does leave many questions unanswered as to his bodyguard's failure to prevent this tragedy, and investigations are being conducted. Now, while some are speculating that it was Amy herself who killed Mr. Bashke, but pages from a comic detailing the event have been leaked, showing that we might just not know the whole story. I'll try not to spoil anything in this video, but I will provide the download links for pages 1-6 to and 7-19 to in the description below, since they are the only ones released so far. As far as we know, only 1 out of 16 possible mercs can be responsible for the murder of Mr. Bashki, Skyhammer and Ara being the two left out in this case, and the way the investigation will be commencing will be as follows. Every week, four new suspects will be put into the free rotation. The mercs most taken in squads during that week will be listed as a prime suspect. And in the fifth week, all four prime suspects will be placed into free rotation, and the most taken merc of that week will be revealed as the culprit. Kind of a neat thing to say the least, but it has left a few players a bit disappointed, hoping for more of a concrete storyline than the decision being left up to the most used merc, but I do still think this is very good. It gives everyone a chance to test out every merc, minus Amy, during each week of the free rotations, making the event last for a good amount of time, as well as involving players in the outcome. Week 1 rotation seems to be already picked out, compromised of Artie, Nader, Proxy, and Sawbones, and there is already speculation as to who will be on the second week rotation. From this picture we can see what looks to be pixelated portraits of the mercs Stoker, Phantom, Sparks, and Rhino. We will also be seeing a new type of currency for this event in the form of cycles. Now as far as we know, we can earn these cycles from playing the game, just as regular credits can be earned, special missions can grant cycles, as well as being able to convert credits into cycles. The conversion rate between credits and cycles has not yet been established, so stay tuned for some more information on that at a later date. It's also been established that you can purchase a single culprit case during the event, which will be locked until the end of the fifth week, when you can then open it up to roll for one of nine possible loadouts for the culprit. So you're basically guaranteed to get a card for the culprit, but which loadout that may be is up to fate. This picture also features what appears to be another type of case, separate from the culprit case. So my best guess is that there will be event cases that will be purchasable with cycles that hold a chance to receive an event scan for any of the mercs, similar to the way the containment war and what the dickens events had cases like this. There are also four other items within the merc serve inventory shown here, but what they are can only be speculated upon this time but I'm definitely excited to see what else is being brought to the table for this event. At any rate, that's all the information I have in regards to the new event, but please keep your eyes peeled on the Dirty Bomb Twitter for more leaks and teasers. I will, of course, provide a link to that in the description of the video. And in last and other news, the winners of the DB Nation Paint Bunny Easter Contest has just been announced. For those of you who don't know, there was recently a contest to see who could come up with the most creative Easter-themed content revolving around their favorite mercs. I'll list the prizes on screen now, but let's see the winners. 
Our first place winner comes from Kmitsu, who has painted just a wonderful, cute little picture of Proxy collecting some Easter eggs, getting ready to give her gift basket over to Phoenix and Sparks in the next room. Aw, isn't that sweet? The only problem is that Phoenix and Sparks don't know. The eggs are filled with explosives. Proxy would feel absolutely no remorse for the pain she's about to inflict on poor little old Sparks. Never did no harm to nobody. Except Jeff and Kevin from accounting. Max Bashke. But it's easy to tell. I mean, come on. Just look at those cold, dead eyes. Our second place winner is Lutre. And I'm probably saying that wrong, but I'm still gonna say it anyway. You can see Nader here firing what seems to be Easter eggs out of her grenade launcher. And well, that's just taking egging somebody's house to a whole new level. I mean, come on. She does have a very large backpack that is filled with more eggs, and she looks pretty mad too. She even has a little bunny companion who I can only assume serves the purpose of providing more Easter eggs to continuously egg people. How disturbing. Actually, this getup that Nader is sporting for whatever reason reminded me of this picture, where somebody on the forums came up with Halloween costume ideas for some of the mercs, Nader being one of them. I thought it was fairly funny, but there's also more on the forum thread, so if you want to check it out, then I'll leave a link to the description below. They even did a mock-up on one of Sparks' stolen identities, Jeff, so I'll just let this picture sit with you as it will, and you can form your own thoughts, okay? So... Finally, our third place winner, which is actually my favorite out of the three, and you're gonna see why, was the Baron, with his just magnificent rendition of Jesus' resurrection, using Phoenix's self-revive as the main punchline of the joke. I don't know if it's the beautiful artwork mixed with the hilariously captioned Merc heads on them, the healing pulse, or just the joke itself that makes this so wonderful, but I think this is just, this is top notch. There were, of course, many other entries as well, and if you're interested in viewing them all, you can check them out on the Reddit thread, which I will, of course, link in the description, as always. Anyways, don't mind those dumb little gags I threw in at the end there. I'm just trying something new, so if you thought it was funny, then let me know. But really, guys, I know I haven't been making many videos lately, but I've been, like, super busy. I mean, like, totally always having stuff to do, like, all the time. I mean, I'm a pretty busy guy, you know? But no, seriously, gameplay videos will be coming soon. Oh god, I'm starting to sound like splash damage now, aren't I? Don't worry guys, I got tons of videos coming soon, okay? So just sit tight. But seriously, I'm going to be working on those Dirty Bomb tutorial videos that I did uh, kind of announce in the last video. Some just pure gameplay videos as well with some commentary over top of it. Maybe some more funny moments videos. I've actually got like a shitload of save replays that I need to cycle through and sort out, but half of them I usually end up deleting because I have a tendency to just hit the save button on my replay buffer every time I get like a triple kill or something, and that's not usually that impressive to see. You'll obviously still see some Feedback Fridays whenever something impressive or interesting happens. Hopefully more often too, because my last Feedback Friday was posted a month after the one previous to it. So as long as there's stuff coming from SD, I'll have some stuff to talk about. And the level up videos are something that I personally enjoy doing, so I'll keep doing that as well. Maybe we'll see some other games on the channel, but uh, Dirty Bomb will still be the main focus. So I don't know, we'll see. Okay, wow, Sov. Way to make the outro an entire page in length. Okay, well, if you've made it this far into the video, you are an absolute legend, mate. So hopefully I'll see you in the next video, but until then, as always, take care, everyone.